Europe's two middleweight fighter aircraft, the Eurofighter Typhoon and Dassault Rafale, have fought tooth and nail for multi-billion euro sales across the world. Geographically surrounded on four sides by the Eurofighter nations, the frivolous observer may liken the French Rafale to Asterix and his indomitable friends. The result is that France's withdrawal from the future European fighter aircraft in the early 1980s resulted in a vast and unnecessary duplication of time, money and effort to produce two very similar aeroplanes. The relatively subtle differences between these two superbly capable aircraft have inspired a great deal of heated debate, often poisoned by pride and nationalism. Justin Bronk is a research fellow of military sciences at the Royal United Services Institute and editor of the Russi Defence Systems. We asked him to compare the types. One, what is the biggest difference in the philosophy of the designs? With common DNA in terms of initial development and requirement setting work before France split away from what became the Eurofighter Consortium to develop the Rafale, it's unsurprising that both aircraft have relatively similar design philosophies compared to their competitors globally. The biggest source of difference comes from the French requirement that the basic airframe design be suitable for Cato bar carrier operations, which carries particular requirements in terms of relatively high alpha, low speed handling, especially with external stores still attached. The Rafale was also designed from the outset as a nuclear delivery system, which was not a major consideration for the Eurofighter nations. In terms of the design philosophy effects on the final aircraft, the Rafale has a greater emphasis on load carrying and exceptional handling even at very low speeds, whilst the Typhoon as a design is more focused on maximum performance at altitude and agility at transonic and supersonic speeds. This is all relative, however, as both aircraft perform very similarly in most scenarios compared to other types. Question two, radar, air-to-air -air engagement at long ranges. The RBE-2 has the advantage against targets with a low radar cross-section due to the greater performance of AESA types against these types. Captor M has the advantage against larger targets such as bombers or MiG-31 Foxhounds due to a much larger aperture and generally higher altitude perch during air-to-air -air engagements. The Radar Zero will outrange both against airborne targets. RBE-2 has an advantage due to much faster AESA scan, acquisition and classification of target capabilities, greater resistance to dropping contacts during manoeuvres, as well as excellent information display for pilots in the F3R cockpit. RBE-2 is likely to still beat Radar Zero upon IOC due to more mature systems and human machine interface. RBE-2 as a multifunctional AESA radar gives far more air-to-ground functionality than Captor M. Radar Zero is optimized for air-to-air -air and is unlikely to challenge RB2 in this arena. RBE2 again due to the advantages of AESA array plus a more mature maritime attack mode with Exocet missiles integrated. Typhoon has anti-ship munition options, but no current operators use them. Which aircraft has a superior infrared search and track system, and why? Typhoon. With the pirate system, it's significantly ahead of the legacy Rafale IRST. The latter was deleted from the latest F3R standard aircraft, pending an updated capability in the F4 standard jets leaving a Razor Rangefinder EO ball only. Pirate is a genuinely exceptional IRST or infrared search and track, although for years shortages of spares parts limited its use by various frontline squadrons. Both aircraft have similar cockpit layouts in most respects, with three large main multifunctional colour displays capable of significant customization to suit individual pilot preferences in the latest versions. 
Both are significantly cleaner in terms of switches and clutter than previous generations of aircraft, and slightly cleaner than current generation F-15s and F-16s in US Air Force service. A pilot from either of these two fighters would find little out of place or unfamiliar in terms of cockpit layout, although the internal menus and system logic may be different from what they're used to. By dint of being complex multi-role single seat, in most case fighters, the HOTAS controls are fairly intimidating to someone used to a US teen series, but once mastered are extremely comprehensive. Having flown full fidelity typhoon simulators in Italy and the UK, including the latest Project Centurion multi-role standard used by the RAF, I was very impressed by the intuitive feel of the human-machine interface across various multi-role tasks. Unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to do the same with the French Air Force. According to all the Rafale pilots I've spoken to, the Rafale's F3R standard HMI is superb from an operator's point of view in multi-role scenarios, especially in terms of displaying threat information. The central display protruding outwards towards the pilot in the Rafale would be a matter of personal taste over the more traditional Typhoon display layout with an easier view of the main radar situational awareness display coming at the cost of slightly reduced cockpit working area in a cockpit already slightly more snug than Typhoon's. The Typhoon has an advantage in terms of a mature helmet mounted display system in the form of the Striker helmet and an extremely advanced follow one, the Striker 2, is well into testing with integral night vision, multi-role, visual voice target designation capabilities and other advancements. Meanwhile, the new Qatari standard Rafales are being delivered with the type's first helmet mounted display, but the French Air Force still lacks this delivery and the system is still to be matured. Maintenance, sortie rates, operating costs, and general cost. Both fighters are fairly expensive to operate compared to solutions such as Gripen or F-16 on a one-for-one -one basis, being large, complex, twin-engine beasts. The exact cost per flight hour, a hugely contentious topic anyway, will depend greatly on which operator and which version you're looking for. For example, Spanish Typhoons cost a great bit more to fly than British ones since the RAF flies its fleet a lot more and has more streamlined maintenance support arrangements. However, within the RAF, the older Tranche ones are much more costly to fly and difficult to maintain than the new Tranche 3s. Rafale operating costs and availability, likewise, varies across standards and operators. In extremely broad brush terms, French Rafales sit somewhere in the middle in terms of operating costs compared to Typhoon, being slightly more expensive than the UK's Tranche 2 and 3 Typhoons under the Titan support arrangements, but cheaper than Spain or Germany's Typhoons. For export operators, things are much more dependent on fleet size and support contract structures than the difference between each aircraft type. In terms of unit cost, Rafale is marketed as cheaper than the latest standards of Typhoon, although the Indian experience would suggest that in practice, export customer requirements on industrial offsets and liability can dramatically alter costs compared to the upfront offer, so I'd be wary of comparing public cost claims from either manufacturer. The actual cost will depend on the government-to-government -government relationship and how many of the bells and whistles each customer wants to pay for. However, as a rule, Rafale is probably slightly cheaper in real terms to acquire than Typhoon. Low observability. Both Rafale and Typhoon have low observable features, but quite frankly, neither is a low observable type. Completely slicked off with no external stores 
or targeting pods, a Rafale would likely have a lower frontal radar cross-section compared to a Typhoon, but in practice, neither would be combat effective in this configuration. With external pylons, tanks, weapons and pods, both have a sufficient RCS to be detected at long ranges by modern sensors such as the Urbis E on the Su-35 and Chinese AESAs on the J-10C, the J-16 or J-20, as well as ground-based air defense radars. Aerodynamics and performance. It's said that the Rafale would have an advantage in a dogfight below 10,000 feet and a typhoon above. Would you agree with this? Within visual range combat, both Typhoon and Rafale would likely destroy each other in the merge, in a 1v1 or 2v2. However, if talking about a guns fight, then Rafale has better agility, instantaneous turn, and sustained turn capabilities below around 15,000 feet. Between 15,000 feet and around 30,000 feet, the relative merits will depend on speed range as if the Typhoon might start with an advantage in a supersonic merge, but Rafale would improve relatively as speeds drop during a long engagement. In practice, it would depend on pilot experience and skill to fly their aircraft at best corner speed and manage their energy and position to best effect. At higher altitude, Typhoon's greater specific excess power and decoupled canards give it a slight advantage which increases as altitude increases above 45,000 feet. What is Typhoon's configuration optimized for and what about Rafale? Typhoon is designed to excel in acceleration, climb rate and supersonic performance and agility at high altitudes for maximum beyond visual range capability. Rafale is designed to excel at subsonic speeds and at lower altitudes. It's still a brutal performer compared to most other fighters, but cannot match Typhoon's climb rate and brute thrust, especially at higher altitudes. With heavy loads, however, Rafale performs significantly better than Typhoon across almost the entire performance envelope, having been designed from the outset to incorporate heavy multi-role loads. Typhoon's flight control software starts to progressively restrict the jet with heavier, or particularly asymmetric, loads. The aerodynamic modification kit developed by Eurofighter would address these limitations and greatly improve the instantaneous turn rate and agility at all speeds with heavy loads, but so far no operator has bought it, suggesting they are broadly satisfied with the aircraft as it is. High Alpha Performance Neither aircraft sparkle in the High Alpha regime compared to the Hornet family or anything with thrust vectoring, but the Rafale's aerodynamically coupled canards give it slightly better High Alpha authority at slow speed than Typhoon. Abilities at different altitudes The lower the altitude, the greater the Rafale's margin of advantage. The higher one goes, the better Typhoon performs relatively. Typhoon is happiest at 50,000 feet and above. Turn rates. Depends on altitude and speed. As above, the higher the speed and altitude of an engagement, the better Typhoon performs relative to Rafale and vice versa. In terms of instantaneous turn rate, Rafale has a slight advantage in air combat configuration and that increases with heavier multi-role or strike loads. Energy management. Both fighters will pull 9G all day long in air combat configuration and at most altitudes. At low altitudes, Rafale's energy retention is slightly better, but at best corner speed, Whilst at higher altitudes, Typhoon has better energy retention in terms of energy regeneration. Typhoon has the edge by dint of a higher specific excess power. Range and endurance. Both types have a similar ferry range with a heavy three tank fit. However, Typhoon also uses a lot more fuel in afterburner. Mission profiles that involve a lot of afterburner use, Rafale will likely have the edge. In practice, both types depend to a large degree on tanker support for most operational missions. Weapons Amram versus Mika The AIM-120 C7 and AIM-120D variants of Amram used by RAF Typhoons significantly outrange Mika, although they do not boast an infrared variant for passive beyond visual range engagement capabilities. 
The flip side is that both AMRAM variants have advanced off-board guidance capabilities to allow passive engagements in cooperation with another aircraft in active mode. US development efforts have emphasized these cooperative engagement capabilities far more than French ones over the past two decades, and Typhoon benefits from that weapon heritage. ASRAM and IRIS T versus Mika. Mika has slightly superior range to ASRAM and significantly superior range to IRIS T. All are highly agile and lethal missiles in a within visual range engagement, with IRIS T boasting the greatest knife fight agility, ASRAM the best performance off the rail, and Mika the best reach. The lack of the helmet mounted sight for Rafale until the Qatari standard has meant that in practice, Typhoon users may be able to get more out of Iris T or ASRAM in a dynamic within visual range engagement. Guns, Mauser BK-27 versus Giat Cannon. Both are devastating revolver cannons with selectable rates of fire. The Giat has the advantage in maximum possible firing rate of 2,500 rounds per minute versus 1,700 rounds per minute. Although in practice, both would likely fire at comparable rates of fire for both air-to-air -air or air-to-ground use to make best use of very limited ammunition. There's 125 available rounds for Rafale and 150 for Typhoon. As revolver cannons, both reach their maximum rate of fire almost immediately. The BK-27 has slightly better muzzle velocity and ballistic properties, whilst the Giat has slightly better destructive effect due to its larger shell. In practice, there is little to choose between them. I pity the enemy shot by either. Air-to-ground munitions. Tranche 2 and 3 Typhoon's main strike armament of Paveway 4, Brimstone and Storm Shadow give it world-leading, high-precision, low-collateral damage tools for most ground targets. It can also carry other munitions including the US Paveway 2 and 3 series of laser-guided bombs and has been cleared for the AGM-88 Harm and British Alarm anti-radiation missiles, although these are not in operational use. The ongoing flight trials of the Spear 3 multi-role light standoff munition, which includes an electronic warfare variant for stand-in jamming on UK Typhoons, give the type access to another highly potent option. Although at present, the UK is only paying to actually use Spear 3 on the F-35B. France's AASM Hammer series of glide and boosted bomb guidance kits gives Rafale a comparable capability to Paveway 4 with a greater amount of warhead and range flexibility. The drawback is extremely high munitions cost. At the lower end, the Rafale can also carry and deliver the US made Paveway 2 and 3 series, and like Typhoon, is cleared to carry, but does not currently use a range of other US munitions. If you've enjoyed the video material accompanying this comparison, and it was gorgeous, I think we'll agree, we have to thank Planes TV and the Planes TV archive for that. Um, Planes TV has been producing air show and aviation documentaries for a long time, 30 years, and you can see their archive of aviation action online at planestv.com forward slash hush kit to get a free month's access to the PTV on demand service. Uh, thanks to Ian, who did all the brilliant editing, provided all the footage for that. I provided the dodgy audio. Um, something I intend to sort out next time. I want everybody to pre-order the Hush Kit Book of Warplanes because it's going to be very special. It's crowd-funded, which means there's no compromises. We don't have to do what everyone else does, and we haven't. We've gone for rare types. We've gone for in-depth analysis. We've gone for funny stuff, subversive stuff aircraft types not covered in other places, exquisite artworks, amazing diagrams, interviews with some really crazy people, and it's a very special aeroplane book. Um, and if you'd like to support it, pre-order it from Unbound. The publisher is Unbound, um, so do that. Um, if you wish, and if you love aeroplanes and you love books, um, subscribe, 
down there if you haven't already visit hashkit.net which is what this is all about this is years of work by a whole bunch of people who love aeroplanes and have devoted themselves to producing i think now we're in the thousands of articles so do pop down that's all we've got time for in part one so do join us in part two which is coming very soon uh, where we're going to look even deeper into this comparison of the Dassault Rafale and the Eurofighter Typhoon. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, as I say, part two is coming soon. In the meantime, we've got more videos on this channel. Um, get involved, stick your comments in the comment section, subscribe, do all the usual things, and pop over to our main site, hushkit.net, where there's tons of stuff.